Hey guys, welcome. Lord of Pontel here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. This is part 10 of my guide to Eden, and we are now on Monday of the tally week, so that means it is rewards time. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you what rewards I got personally, what we managed to do in Undisputed Guild um, for our Eden season, and then I'm going to open my rewards. So, let's start with Undisputed and I will go through the slight differences that you get for rewards in Eden compared to Reign of Chaos seasons one to four. So we'll click on Reign of Chaos, go just close the tally info. And if we go down here, you'll see season rewards. Before the tally week, you would be able to switch through these and see what um, different levels you can obtain. So now uh, we scored 30 points in Eden. That means uh, we had a t one town. Um, this is the lowest reward level, unfortunately, that you can get in Eden. But it was a very tough season for us. We're not a big, uh, we're not one of the top 10 alliances in our region. And um, for various reasons, we just weren't able to uh, link up with another uh, large alliance to form a strong guild this time. But we're, we're hopeful that next time and we'll be able to do that. So let's have a look at the rewards. Um, first, you will get a Guildmaster reward, similar to your Alliance Leader reward in, in normal Reign of Chaos. And as you can see for this level, Guild Occupation value 30 or more, uh, you get one X recruitment card. So that's gonna give you uh, one X legend recruit, legendary selection. Um, so that will allow you to choose one of the 14 SX 1 to 3 heroes available. Um, but it will be a random selection and they break it down into two options, SX 1 and SX 2. And there are seven heroes in each selection. Um, Alliance leader, uh, Guild Masters will also get the S1 to S4 legendary, um, if we just scroll along, here we go, selection which will allow you to choose either um, which season you want to choose a hero from. Um, so it's either seasons one, two, S, an S1, S2, S3 or S4. But again, the option is then random. Uh, so the game will give you just a random selection. So it's always, you know, you could end up with a duplicate that you don't need. And then finally, this elite recruitment option. Um, so recruit one in elite recruitment five, 100% guarantees an orange hero. Um, so it's not going to be great. Um, 10,000 gems, 30,000 honor coins, which if you've seen the honor shop and honor coins video, if you save up um, at least 200,000 of these, you can then choose uh, to select a specific hero from a specific season. Um, so it is worth holding on to those, or you can buy resets with them, various good things. And you get a 50 million resource bundle, which for some of you that might be like level C21 to C24, you're still grinding away to get those resources to work towards your C25 and T9. This is going to be a, a you know a nice little boost for you. In terms of beneath Guildmaster, then this is uh, again where the, kind of there's some core changes. So moving on from the Guildmaster rewards, this is where we get some differences in the game. Um, if you've seen my previous videos, then you would have noted that you can have actually up to 200 members in a guild, uh, which is obviously more than the 100 you would have in an alliance for a standard Reign of Chaos season. And to factor in that, there are four levels in total of rewards. So here we are, we have core rewards. So in seasons one to four, that's a contribution reward and only nine players can get that. But at the end of Eden, you can give 19 of your guild members these core rewards. And as you see, uh, they're actually um, at this level, they are the same as the Guildmaster. So that's quite nice. Then on, you'll get powerhouse rewards and 90 members will receive these. Uh, for these, it's just the one X legendary selection recruitment card. So you can select from X recruitment cards one or two. And you get two elite recruitment ticket fives. 10,000 gems, the 30,000 honor coins, 50 million resources. For anyone who is then, if you do have over 110 members, the remaining 90 member rewards in your guild would only get 
a one to four legendary recruitment card. So no X hero. Um, elite recruitment ticket five, ten thousand gems, thirty thousand honor coins, and no resources. Um, so it's something to factor in. This is, but this is at the lowest level. And to be honest with you, if you do have more than a hundred members in your guild, you should be a stronger guild, and you would be getting better rewards than this. Uh, and you know, we didn't have more than a hundred uh, members in our guild, so no one would be getting this member reward. It, everyone will be getting either. Um, the core rewards or the powerhouse rewards. I just want to touch on core rewards or if any of you are in seasons one to four um, in terms of the contribution rewards. Now for us in, in Undisputed, we've always done it based on um, a, democrat well, a democratic way where the R4 council would vote for the top um, players, top nine players that we felt had contributed to the season. And that's not necessarily who had the highest nine scores in Reign of Chaos, or in this case, Eden. Because, okay, yes, in Eden, uh, sorry, in Reign of Chaos, seasons one to four, the more points players make, the better your score is, and that does contribute towards your alliance points and getting higher up the rankings table. But equally, each time you win a war, you get 20% of your opponent's points. And that can that is what is actually going to have probably the biggest impact on where you finish in a season. Um, and some players might not be taking tiles all day, every day, but they might be very strong and making key differences in wars. And we've kind of always, in Undisputed, kind of taken a, an overall look at people's contributions. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, there are some lower level players that, have made uh, tile paths and actually been very valuable and helped towards those victories. So we don't kind of just look at who's recycling level 12 and above tiles and picking up a couple of thousand points every day. It's, it is the overall um, contribution. And that's how we decided on our core rewards this time as well. It was based on you know, who, di diplomatic acts uh, and efforts, people that made you know, the effort to clear enemy tiles, um, particularly because in Eden, your own personal scores do not matter towards your guild score. Your guild rewards are purely based on the occupation value. Um, so you can take recycled tiles all day, but you're not going to, once you've hit 10,000 points, you're not actually helping your guild uh, improve their rewards. Um, you need to be actively helping in battles, taking towns, maybe a capital and, and or maybe working with other guilds and, and looking at the dip diplomatic side that maybe you can merge with someone else. All of those kind of factors are gonna be a bigger influence on how you get rewards. So what did I get? Well, um, I just got, I didn't get the core rewards. Um, I, I had a lot on uh, at work the first, first few weeks um, of the game because we just opened again after the COVID lockdown. And therefore, um, I even though I'm an R4, you know, again, and I did help a lot towards the last few weeks, I wasn't consistently helping throughout the season. I was not one of the top 19 players. And I'm happy to say that. Um, in previous Reign of Chaos seasons, yes, I was definitely in the top five or six um, contributing and I was doing it on multiple accounts, but I just didn't have the time this time. Um, so if we go to, no. So if we go to system, Isabella has sent me a message saying Reign of Chaos Season Rewards. And as you can see here, I've picked up the 50 million resource bundle, 10,000 gems, the one legendary selection recruitment card, and then the two elite recruitment ticket fives and the 30,000 honor coins. So let's go and open those tickets and see what I'm going to get. As always, they will just be in your items list if you wanted to do it that way. Or we can go into the bar and you should see them as an option there. So here we go. Ah, okay. So actually, I do need to go and uh, choose my X. Oh, Chip got a mortal gun. JHP got Rosenblade. Um, 
So there is the chance to get S heroes in this elite recruitment, um, but we just have to wait and see. Uh, so let's open up my elite recruitment. Now, when you click on it, it's going to give you option uh, elite ticket one or ticket two. Now, there, as I say, that if you've seen earlier in the season, you can check which heroes are in which recruitment ticket option uh, for all the weeks of the season. Now, um, for those who have been watching, I do have um, both Avalanche and Army Breaker in my legions, and I have I need one more Army Breaker to max him, and I need two more for Avalanche. They are both in, and they are both Cavalry X heroes. My account is predominantly Cavalry, so um, though I am working on my Archers heroes, I'm not too bothered about that. I, what I would say is, um, so I will be going for Recruitment Ticket 2. I do have Dachi and X heroes, um, Legion Front Row, Le uh, Footman Legion hero and I do have um, Tarantula as well who is an Archer's hero and they are both available in Ticket 1 but again um, my core focus right now is ma trying to max Avalanche, uh, Avalanche and Army Breaker so we're going to go for Item 2 and select so that means I've picked up that ticket so now if we go back into the bar it should be available here we go and if we click on the search icon, so I can get Valkyrie, who is a footman hero, a very good one actually, end game back row footman hero. I can get Defender, who is an Archers. And then as I said, Army Breaker or Avalanche that we've seen before. Windwalker, who is a front row cavalry X hero as well, who's very good, um, but not quite end game meta. Uh, that would be the Lawman for front row on on cavalry. Sakura Blossom is an archer's hero and Dragon's Avatar is Footman again. So to be quite frank guys, I'm really looking for Army Breaker or the Avalanche. Um, if I was to get the Valkyrie as a back row, currently I've got um, Jade Rapshessa on my back row. Um, so, you know, a next hero would be an upgrade there, even and Dragon's Avatar as well. They, so I'm I not too bothered about the archers here, the Defender and Sakura Blossom. If I if I get Army or Avalanche, fantastic, and if I get Dragons, Windwalker or the Valkyrie, not so bad. So here we go. I've only got one. Uh, oh well. Dragon's Avatar it is. Okay. And on to my Elite Recruitment 5 tickets. Oh, Archie. Can I get an S hero? Come on. No, we've got Hurricane. Okay. Well, there we go. That was about as exciting as it was always going to be. Um, so let's check out so now I have five X heroes and Dragon's Avatar. So it is Footman. So that is kind of in my second line of what I was hoping for. And if we have a quick look at his skills, so skill range one, one random friendly squad within effective range, 50% increased damage for the squad. When the current troop is halved, gain 100% additional might and resistance. So that's, that's a good buff. Skill 5, passive skill, range 2, 1 random enemy score with an effective range. After basic attacks, 100% chance to deal 105% damage to an enemy squad within range, up to 247% damage. So after basic attacks, this is a guaranteed skill. It will work every turn unless you're up against an opponent who has a hero who would... Um, silence passive skills so that's really interesting you're you're gonna get dragon's avatar is going to activate and do if you max this skill 247 percent damage all right just to the one random enemy squad uh, but that's still an effective range too so you would have to put him on front row of your footmen uh let's have a look at his awaken skill 15 percent might resistance and damage nothing spectacular there seventh skill is 40 percent might as 
quite often the case. And let's have a look. Unyielding Dragon, status skill, effective range one, one random friendly squad within effective range. When hero is leading footmen's, when current troop power is halved, 10% chance to basic attack twice. When the squad is defeated or his morale broken morale, the hero will fight on for one more turn. Uh, and then up to when you max this, when current troop power is half, 100% chance to basic attack twice. So it's kind of like his skills are kind of like last chance saloon esque. Like once half of your troops are gone, um, they'll get this 100% buff to might and resistance. They'll get 100% chance to attack twice. And even if they are defeated, he will usually. Uh, if a legion is defeated or, or the morale, morale is broken, then the hero goes as well immediately. Um, but Dragon's Avatar will stay for one more turn in in the fight. Hmm. If I'm honest with you, I don't think he's a meta hero. Um, I think you're going to be better off. There's no like healing skill there, which is generally better. And I'd say that you'd actually be better off having Bleeding Stead on your front row than Dragon's Avatar. So it's, he's not the best um, option. I do already have Bleeding Stead. I just don't have um, duplicates for him yet. So that's not a great result, to be honest, guys, for my rewards. But, um, you know, that's that's the way the game is. As I say, uh, when you're not a big spender and you're not popping out those recruitment tickets all the time in their hundreds to recruit everything you can in, you know, in existence, then you have to rely on, on rewards to a, to a point and I just haven't had the luck on this on this season, but that's fine. And next season, you know, we're we're going to be better, better organised in undisputed, and hopefully, we're going to get much better rewards um, for our efforts next time. And while uh, you know, I'm just going to keep saving my super tickets. I think I've got 132 at the moment. Yeah. So you know, maybe we'll have a recruitment event on Thursday, and I might be able to pick up another hero. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what is planned by the developers for the coming few weeks. So there we go, guys. That has been uh, part 10 of my Eden series, and uh, we just covered rewards today. As I say, if you do much better and you have a stronger guild, uh, then you can potentially be earning you know, much more rewards than what I, you've just seen me earn uh, from this season. And um, I think it's possible to gain up to eight or nine tickets uh, from rewards for the top alliances. So there's definitely, um, you know, these if you if your guild are taking Eden seriously and you and potentially you look at working towards getting as many points as you can or occupation as high occupation value as you can, then you can really um, make a difference. But it's tough, you know. There's only one ancient temple on the map that has gives you 400 occupation value, and so only one, only one guild on the map is definitely going to get potentially those top rewards. No one else is going to get them. There's just not enough points on the board. And as a guild, how, you know, even if you have 200 members, how far can you split yourself to defend all of your um, assets that you have on the map? You you can't that you if you have like if you have 1500 occupation value, you're more than likely going to have more than. 10, 10 assets on the Eden map and that means that you'd have to split um, up into groups of even 20 or less and when you think that there could be smaller guilds that have 100 members all going for just that town or that capital to get some points because they're desperate to get on the on the board that's where um, you know if I have one message for you uh, before you guys go into Eden it is think about diplomacy and um, maybe work and you know who you're going to work with that is absolutely my number one top tip after experiencing this first season of eden so that is everything for this first season of eden guys i hope you found the 10-part series useful for all of you that are going to be going into your first seasons in uh, the coming weeks and months i will look at maybe doing a summary video where we i can talk about the top kind of things to focus on maybe some top tips um, and i'll look to do that later in the week on the channel in general of course i'm going to keep going with my hero, uh, season heroes guide and um things on research and, and buildings, etc. Uh, we'll still be doing uh, re recruitment uh, videos, etc. So lots still more to come. And um, today we're over 500 um, subscribers as well, which is absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much. 
I really appreciate all the support. For those of you that haven't already, please do click that subscribe button, ring that bell, share my channel in your online chats and on province chat and any social media that you use like Line or WhatsApp. And uh, that's it for this video, guys, and I will see you soon.